Cratylus, ancient Greek, Kratylos, Kratylos, is the name of a dialogue by Plato. Most modern scholars agree that it was written mostly during Plato's so-called Middle Period. In the dialogue, Socrates is asked by two men, Cratylus and Hermogenes, to tell them whether names are conventional or natural. That is, whether language is a system of arbitrary signs or whether words have an intrinsic relation to the things they signify. The individual Cratylus was the first intellectual influence on Plato Sedley. Aristotle states that Cratylus influenced Plato by introducing to him the teachings of Heraclitus, according to M. W. Riley. <laughs> Summary The subject of Cratylus is the correctness of names, peri onomaton orthotetos in other words, it is a critique on the subject of naming Baxter, when discussing a enoma, enoma and how it would relate to its subject. Socrates compares the original creation of a word to the work of an artist. An artist uses color to express the essence of his subject in a painting. In much the same way, the creator of words uses letters containing certain sounds to express the essence of a word subject. There is a letter that is best for soft things, one for liquid things, and so on. He comments, The best possible way to speak consists in using names all or most of which are like the things they name that is, are appropriate to them, while the worst is to use the opposite kind of names. One countering position, held by Hermogenes, is that names have come about due to custom and convention. They do not express the essence of their subject, so they can be swapped with something unrelated by the individuals or communities who use them. The line between the two perspectives is often blurred. During more than half of the dialogue, Socrates makes guesses at Hermogenes' request as to where names and words have come from. These include the names of the Olympian gods, personified deities, and many words that describe abstract concepts. He examines whether, for example, giving names of streams to Cronus and Rhea row flow or space are purely accidental. Don't you think he who gave to the ancestors of the other gods the names Rhea and Cronus had the same thought as Heracleitus? Do you think he gave both of them the names of streams and onomata merely by chance? The Greek term, Ruma, may refer to the flow of any medium and is not restricted to the flow of water or liquids. Many of the words which Socrates uses as examples may have come from an idea originally linked to the name, but have changed over time. Those of which he cannot find a link, he often assumes have come from foreign origins or have changed so much as to lose all resemblance to the original word. He states, Names have been so twisted in all manner of ways, that I should not be surprised if the old language when compared with that now in use would appear to us to be a barbarous tongue. The final theory of relations between name and object named is posited by Cratylus, a disciple of Heraclitus, who believes that names arrive from divine origins, making them necessarily correct. Socrates rebukes this theory by reminding Cratylus of the imperfection of certain names in capturing the objects they seek to signify. From this point, Socrates ultimately rejects the study of language, believing it to be philosophically inferior to a study of things themselves. Topic. Hades name in Cratylus An extensive section of Plato's dialogue Cratylus is devoted to the etymology of the god's name, in which Socrates is arguing for a folk etymology not from unseen, but from his knowledge of all noble things. The origin of Hades name is uncertain, but has generally been seen as meaning the unseen one since antiquity. Modern linguists have proposed the Proto-Greek form asterisk wides, unseen. The earliest attested form is aids, aids which lacks the proposed digamma. West argues instead for an original meaning of the one who presides over meeting up from the universality of death. Topic. Hades' name in classical Greek The with sound was lost at various times in various dialects, mostly before the classical period. In Ionic, with had probably disappeared before Homer's epics were written down 7th century BC, but its former presence can be detected in many cases because its omission left the meter defective. For example, the words anax, tribal king, lord, military leader, found in the Iliad, would have originally been anax, winox, and is attested in this form in Mycenaean Greek, and oinus wine are sometimes used in the meter where a word starting with a consonant would be expected. 
Further evidence coupled with cognate analysis shows that oinus was earlier oinus, voinos, cf. Cretan Doric ibina, cf. Latin venum and English. Wine. Topic. Appropriate sounds Rho R is a tool for copying every sort of motion. Can you Iota I for imitating all the small things that can most easily penetrate everything. Phi, phi psi, psi, sigma S, and zeta Z as all these letters are pronounced with an expulsion of breath. They are most appropriate for imitating blowing or hard breathing. Delta D and tau T as both involve compression and the stopping of the power of the tongue. When pronounced, they are most appropriate for words indicating a lack or stopping of motion. Lambda L as the tongue glides most of all. When pronounced, it is most appropriate for words denoting a sort of gliding. Gamma G best used when imitating something cloying, as the gliding of the tongue is stopped when pronounced. Nu in best used when imitating inward things, as it is sounded inwardly. Alpha a, eta long e best used when imitating large things, as they are both pronounced long. Omicron o best used when imitating roundness, although these are clear examples of onomatopoeia. Socrates's statement that words are not musical imitations of the nature suggests that Plato didn't believe that language itself generates from sound words. Topic. Platonic theory of forms Plato's theory of forms also makes an appearance. For example, no matter what a hammer is made out of, it is still called a hammer, and thus is the form of a hammer. Socrates, so mustn't a rule setter also know how to embody in sounds and syllables the name naturally suited to each thing? And if he is to be an authentic giver of names, mustn't he, in making and giving each name, look to what a name itself is? And if different rule setters do not make each name out of the same syllables, we mustn't forget that different blacksmiths, who are making the same tool for the same type of work, don't all make it out of the same iron. But as long as they give it the same form even if that form is embodied in different iron the tool will be correct, whether it is made in Greece or abroad. Isn't that so? Plato's theory of forms again appears at 439c, when Cratylus concedes the existence of a beautiful itself, and a good itself, and the same for each one of the things that are. Topic. Translations The I. Becker edition was published 1826 London under the heading Platonis Scripta Greece Omnia. A translation was made by H. N. Fowler and published during 1926 under Loeb Classical Library by Harvard University Press. See also Cratylism Map territory relation Sound symbolism Footnotes References External links Bibliography on Plato's Cratylus PDF Cratylus translation by Benjamin Jowett 1892 starting at page 323 Cratylus public domain audiobook at LibriVox